trust that the pilot will get us from point A to point B and to get us there safely. In fact, how are we even certain that there's actually a pilot in the cockpit? We've never seen him. <laughs> sure, we hear a voice, but that voice could be well pre-recorded. <laughs> it all boils down to faith. We all exercise faith on a daily basis, even when we do not know it. No matter what our religion or non-religion is, we tend to underestimate our own level of faith. You see, folks, faith is universal. Faith does not discriminate between a Christian, a Muslim, or even an atheist. Sure, there are some intellectuals who do not agree with the faith doctrine. But let's take a look at what these opponents of faith have to say. Despite the evidence that faith is universal, we often hear opponents of faith, or sometimes referred to as skeptics, denounce faith as irrational, delusional, and dangerous. Richard Dawkins says in his book, The God Delusion, when a few people are delusional, it is called insanity. When many people are delusional, it is called religion. <laughs> Faith is believed without any evidence, and it must be eradicated. However, this view is quite worrying. You see, because faith is a universal phenomenon, irrespective of religion. Charles Finney, a minister and scholar in the 18th century, puts it this way. The little child, for instance, lives by faith. Human existence is, exists by faith. Destroy all confidence, all faith, and society could not exist. And no business will be transacted, he says. Now to put things into perspective, why would you sign a business contract with a counterparty if you have no faith that they would adhere to the terms of the contract? In the account of Richard Dawkins, he also stated that faith was irrational and praised academia as a more rational alternative to faith. However, in my personal experience with academia, I have come to the conclusion that this too is untrue. Academia is also fallible when it comes to rationality. Let me explain what I mean. You see, in a business ethics class, we denounce Nike for treating workers in Taiwan like animals. And then in the same university, we go to a science class, and then we try to prove that people actually are animals. So on what grounds do we have to denounce Nike's malpractices for treating their workers like animals? In my opinion, this is irrational. But we believe it. Why? Probably because we place our faith in education to be accurate, rational, and faultless. Finally, they claim that faith is dangerous, citing numerous atrocities done in the name of faith, such as September 11th. I personally will never discount the view that these actions should be condemned. However, this logic could be applied to the discipline of science in particular. You see, if faith led to September 11 and is thus deemed dangerous, well, people, physics led to the atomic bomb. Should we stop the study of physics? I believe most will agree with me that physics is essential. Likewise with faith. Proponents of faith over the centuries one in particular has, struck, has stuck out to me. Martin Luther King, a man whose faith compelled him to action. Against all odds, his faith, perseverance, and determination led to the civil rights movement. Were it not for the faith he had in God and what he believed in, I, as a person of color, would not be graced with the opportunity to stand before you today and del deliver the speech. Were it not for Tupper's faith in the educational system, he would not have donated this land that we stand on for Bryan University to be built. In fact, were it not for your faith that this event will actually take place, you would not have wasted your time to walk the so many miles from your offices and dorms to come here. Were it not for the faith that we all have in the power of education, 
We will not sacrificially pay $50,000 a year to attend this prestigious institution. Allow me to commend our very own President Makeley and his wife for sharing this viewpoint. That is the very reason I believe they pioneered the establishment of the Interfaith Center. Ladies and gentlemen, this is why we must embrace our faith. Faith is not this mystical aura that, quote, religious people use to comfort themselves. Faith is actually outside the context of religion. Truth is, everyone has faith. The only difference is where we direct this faith. The Christian puts his faith in Jesus Christ, the Muslim in Allah, and the atheist in himself. Faith is a common ground, for we are all one in faith, and faith makes us one. So let's embrace our faith and stop ostracizing those who are unashamed to proclaim their faith in college. It is a shame that our very own professors in our colleges tend to bash people of faith through condescending remarks that they make. Yeah, I said it. And these students have to be quiet and take it because teachers know more. I can agree that our professors definitely know more, but I would dare to say that it does not mean that they necessarily know better. So where is your faith, young man? Where is your faith, young woman? Don't you know that your faith determines where you will end up? At Bryan, we pride ourselves as the character of success. If you do not have the faith that you can actually be successful, how can you ever have the character of success in you? Dear friends, I have not come to sell you a dream. On the contrary, I have come to reveal to you a reality. I believe we can do better. In fact, I have tremendous faith that we can do much better. I would ask that you agree with me to embrace faith on our campuses. The Inner Faith Center was built for a reason, guys. Embrace your faith. Thank you. Okay, Julie, we'll start with you first. Excellent job. I think that faith can be a topic that scares people at times, and I think you uh, spoke to it with such great articulation and poise, and your tone, inflection, volume, just the way it varied all through the speech, you did an excellent job and made a great point. Yes, I agree, Jude. I thought it was great the way you challenged us to think about the various ways that faith affects us from the, from the very large and uh, big issues to the getting onto the airplane. I mean, I never thought about that. <laughs> is, there, is, is there really a pilot up there? But I, I really appreciated, like Julie, I really appreciated the, the way you articulated what you had to say. But I was most impressed with the way you, uh, I don't want to say, I, I use this word, uh, 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 it, to commend you, the way you played with the idea. You, 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 took the, you gave us the idea, you took it away, you gave us the idea, you took it away, and you did it in different formats. That was really, it challenged us to think, and I really appreciated that. Well, you know that song? You gotta have faith. I mean, that's what I felt like singing after you. Uh, you, you won me over. Um, you nailed it, as, they, as uh, Paula used to say. Um, <laughs> Yeah, Jude, great, great, great. It was a beautifully written speech, too. The, I mean, your, your writing is just outstanding and, and eloquent and the vocabulary was so rich. Um, and the delivery was, was spot on again. And uh, really, I, I think it, you took, maybe more than anybody else tonight, you took um, certain risks in um, saying some things that were maybe seen by some members of the audience as provocative or controversial and I'm a big believer that people have to take risks in life so kudos, nice job. <laughs>